So at its simplest, a commonplace book is just a journal where instead of collecting your own thoughts, you collect the thoughts of others. And primarily, you collect those thoughts from what you read. This is a commonplace book that I recently started because I filled my last one up. And you'll notice that here I'm going for almost no structure at all. This time I decided I would just write down quotes that I liked from the things I read. And occasionally I would try to summarize some of the thoughts that I was having as I reviewed them. So in this book, actually, I have three quotes written down on the first page. I have a quote from my favorite living writer, Wendell Berry, and it's from a poem called Healing. Berry writes that despair is the too little of responsibility and pride is the too much. That line just really stuck out to me, so I put it in my book. And then I was rereading my favorite science fiction novel, The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin, and I ran into this quote from Odo, who's a very important character in that book, even though she never shows up on the page. And the, the line is, the saint is never busy. And then I was reviewing an older book that I had read on Augustine by Rowan Williams, and he wrote, talking about evil is not talking about things. And I was reviewing that book for my newsletter when I was talking actually about Stoic metaphysics and Marcus Aurelius. By the way, there's a link to that newsletter down below. And then you can see I wrote a little bit about what these things had in common. I was not collecting these quotes as if they were going to be connected. What I found was just the things that were sticking out to me lately all had a kind of theme. So I wrote some thoughts, you know, what do these quotes have in common? Well, they seem to suggest that the best way to live of being in the world is not just a matter of avoiding bad things. The saint is a man who is never busy because he has aligned his will and his way of living so that he always enjoys what he does. And if you can do that, perhaps you can achieve the balance that Barry is talking about, the balance between despair and pride. Just a thought I had, but it came to me because I was reviewing what I read and I wrote it down. But how can you do that and how can you get started? So with commonplace books, there's really just three steps. First, you need to read or you need to watch or listen. So you could be watching movies, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks. Commonplace books begin with observation. This can also mean conversations, I would add, but a lot of it is going to come from the things that you read or the media that you consume. The second step is to capture, and by that I just mean write it down. When you look at the page of my commonplace book, you can see at the beginning, it, it's clearly there, there are just three quotes, and I always attribute the source. Now, I like to do this thing where I actually write in um, small print letters, and that clearly distinguishes the captured thoughts from my own synthesis that comes later. And that's step three, reflect. Every once in a while, I just write my own thoughts in my commonplace book. These are always about the text that I have been reading or consuming, and it's usually an attempt to synthesize some of the stuff that I'm putting together. This can actually sometimes just be one quote. Sometimes it can be three quotes, like in this example. Other times it can be 10 quotes. There is no rule here. The point just is to use the things that you are reading or consuming and turn them into activities of the mind rather than just stuff that you can consume and then discard. The idea of wanting to keep a commonplace book is actually really, really old. You could maybe trace some of the ideas back to Aristotle, Seneca, certainly had the idea of a commonplace book. John Locke, the British philosopher, actually published a book on how to organize your commonplace book, which is another topic which we could address, but I'm going to I'm going to leave out here. You should you should organize it however you think is best. I've never found a good method of organization. Um, I just like to write. I think the um, the idea is that what you want to do is have certain ideas repeated in your mind. It's like what Marcus Aurelius would call dying the mind, or this idea that we can truly uh, read, mark, and inwardly digest a text. And once we can do that, it becomes a part of the way that we think. But first, you just have to collect the ideas. I fill up these books with quotations and aphorisms and maxims and rules, some of my own as well. It always gets a little fuzzy. Everything is blurry. And there's no real distinction between different types of thoughts. But having a place where just any idea can go and then you can decide what to do with it later is a really powerful tool for anyone interested in developing their mind, pursuing an intellectual vocation, or just kind of getting a kind of mental clarity. Of course, some ideas aren't good. You're just gonna put them in there and you're gonna realize they aren't worth using. Or maybe they aren't good for you now. Like they're just not what you need right now. And that's fine too. Don't feel like everything that goes in the commonplace book has to be incredibly useful or powerful or insightful. Err on the side of permissiveness. Just put whatever you think might be interesting later into the book. If you discover eventually that those ideas aren't interesting, well, 
that's fine. Don't think about them anymore. But in general, we want to capture as many of those good ideas as we can. And that means sometimes we're going to capture those not so good ideas. And that's okay. It is certainly worth the cost. And there's something also really powerful about just writing it down by hand. I, I really have come to think that this is essential. You have to write these things down by hand. By choosing to copy a quotation by hand, instead of just highlighting it or copying it into a Word document or some kind of app, what you are saying is, this idea is worth my time, and it is at least worth the time to write down once, whether that's 10 seconds or 10 minutes because it's a paragraph. Either way, it takes a kind of time and dedication and care, and that is going to help you actually absorb these ideas and make them part of the way that you think.